Spice and Wolf, Volume 16, The Coin of the Sun 2 by Isuna Hasakura. Lawrence, a seasoned traveling merchant, and Holo, a wise wolf disguised as a beautiful young woman, find themselves entangled in the intricate affairs of the Dabao Company, a powerful trading entity in the Northlands. The company's ambition to issue a new currency, the Treni, has sparked internal conflict, dividing it into two factions. One faction, led by the company's owner, Dabao, and his trusted treasurer, Hilda Schnau, who takes the form of a hare, seeks to use the Treni to bring stability and prosperity to the Northlands. The other faction, driven by insatiable greed, plans to exploit the new currency to wage war and plunder neighboring territories. Hilde, desperate to prevent the Northlands from plunging into chaos, seeks Lawrence and Hollow's assistance. He believes that a forbidden book containing advanced mining techniques could sway the balance of power within the company and undermine the warmongering faction's arguments. Lawrence and Holo, initially hesitant but ultimately convinced by Hilde's sincerity and the potential for profit, agree to help. They embark on a quest to retrieve the forbidden book from a shrewd book merchant named Leroy, who is en route to the southern town of Kishin. Meanwhile, Lawrence and Holo's mercenary companions, the Muri Mercenary Company, led by the young and capable Luard, face their own challenges. The Debeau Company, suspecting their involvement with Hildi, dispatches a formidable force, the Hugo Mercenary Company, to pursue them. Luard, with the guidance of his seasoned strategist Moisey, navigates the treacherous mountain roads, skillfully evading capture while maintaining the illusion of a fierce battle. Holo, demonstrating her extraordinary speed and endurance, reaches Kishin and successfully retrieves the forbidden book after a tense encounter with Leroy and a heated exchange with Elsa a devout young woman accompanying Call. Upon returning to Lesko, Holo discovers that the situation has taken a drastic turn. Hild's faction has been overthrown and the warmongers have seized control of the Debo company. Fearing for their safety, Lawrence and Holo, along with the Miuri mercenaries, flee the town under cover of darkness. Hilde, wounded and on the run, manages to reunite with Lawrence and reveals his plan to seek refuge in Svernal a town known for its opposition to the Debeau Company. He entrusts Lawrence with letters requesting aid from Svernal's leaders and the surrounding lords. Torn between his desire to help Hild and the potential dangers involved, Lawrence initially refuses. However, witnessing Hilda's unwavering determination and realizing the dire consequences of inaction, Lawrence agrees to deliver the letters. The journey to Svernal is fraught with peril. The Hugo Mercenary Company, under the command of the imposing Rebonato, continues their pursuit. However, unknown to Lawrence and Hild, Rebonato has been bribed by the Debo Company to betray them. A carefully orchestrated battle ensues, culminating in a staged avalanche that allows the Miuri mercenaries to escape while leaving behind a group of captives as a ruse. During a tense negotiation, Rebonato reveals his betrayal and demands that Luord disclose Hildi's whereabouts. Luward, severely injured and facing imminent death, calls upon Lawrence to summon Holo. Holo, in her true wolf form, arrives and swiftly overpowers Rebonato and his men, saving Lawrence and the Miuri mercenaries from certain doom. Upon reaching Svernal, Lawrence and Holo discover that the town's leader, Jean Milik, is also Klaus von Havlisch III, a lord known for his opposition to the Debau Company. Milik, however, harbors a deep-seated pessimism believing that the world is unchangeable and that any attempt to resist the Debao Company is futile. Despite Milika's skepticism, Hilda remains determined to rally the townspeople and mount a counteroffensive. Meanwhile, the Debao Company dispatches a cunning envoy, Emmanuel Yanarkin, to Svernal. In a public negotiation, Yanarkin attempts to sway the townspeople by showering them with silver coins, exploiting their greed and undermining Hilda's efforts. Lawrence, Realizing the Debeau Company's scheme exposes their financial vulnerability and reminds the crowd of the company's violation of the church's teachings on interest. Holo, with a powerful howl, silences the crowd and allows Lawrence's words to resonate. The townspeople, realizing their folly and inspired by Hilda's vision, turn against Yanarkin and demand that the town gates be closed. Hildi, with the support of the Miuri mercenaries and the townspeople, successfully defends Svernal and forces the Debao company to negotiate. 
In a surprising turn of events, Hildy proposes that Svernal become a second mint for the Debau company, minting a limited number of gold coins bearing the symbol of the sun. This strategic move ensures Svernal's long-term stability and fosters trust between Hild and Milik. As the dust settles and the threat of war subsides, Lawrence and Holo prepare to depart from Svernal. Hildy, grateful for their assistance, offers Lawrence a position within the Debeau company, recognizing his talent and potential. However, Lawrence, realizing the importance of keeping his promise to Hollow and prioritizing their shared dream of a quiet life, respectfully declines. Before their departure, Hilde reveals a precious gift entrusted to him by Debeau, a coining hammer bearing the symbol of the sun. This symbolic gesture reaffirms their shared dream of a brighter future for the Northlands. Hollow, reflecting on their journey and the challenges they have overcome, acknowledges that while the world may not change, they have gained something invaluable, each other. With their bond stronger than ever, Lawrence and Holo set off towards Yoitsu, Holo's ancestral home, ready to embark on a new chapter in their lives together. If you enjoyed this summary, please consider subscribing to the channel.